a good thing to give thanks and praises to our God. Can we take a moment to bless his name for, for his goodness, his mercy, his loving kindness, his compassion that fails now. And we're excited. We want to bless his name today because there are those who, who've come to be baptized. Somebody tell God thank you. It's been a minute since we could say this. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. To be baptized. Nothing but the right. None but the right. None but the righteous. None but the righteous. Thank you, Jesus. Shall see God. Would you state your full name? Lashana Antoinette Bailey, would you cross your arms? Sister Bailey, based on the profession of your faith, it indeed gives me great pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. I love, come on, come on, come on. I love Jesus, bless you. Oh, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Yes, I take me to the water. Take me to the water. Take me to the water take me to the water to be back if you love him help me say it I love Jesus I I love Jesus. Yeah. I. None but the righteous. None but the righteous. None but the righteous. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Would you state your full name? Hallelujah, hallelujah God. <laughs> Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Brother Alonzo Spearman, based on the profession of your faith and your walk, it indeed gives me great pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I love Jesus. Yes, sir. Come on, somebody, give him praise. Oh, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Come on, let's
must go to the throne of grace. God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen. We thank you for those who've come to go down into the water to be baptized. And I pray to God that even now their testimony will be that they are new creatures in Christ. We ask that, that you continue to remind us all that even in this season, we have a charge to keep and a God to glorify. Let this church be a place where those who've come to the newness of the life of Jesus will nurture them and grow them and develop them into spiritual maturity that they may once again reach back and help others to walk in the newness of life. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to witness those who've gone down into the water to be baptized. Let your spirit stay with us through all out this service today. We give your name glory, honor, and praise. And all those who are excited shouted amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, and praise the Lord. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus, everybody, come on, help me say, oh, I'm so glad, oh, Jesus lifted, everybody say glory, oh, Jesus, open your mouth and say, I'm, oh, Jesus, oh, I'm so glad, so oh, Jesus lifted me, oh, See the, see the, see the. 
one more time. Somebody say, I know that's right. Well, we can come together either by technology or in person and bless the name of our God. God is good and all the time. Our hymn of the morning, our hymn of the morning. Come on, let's do it. It says, down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where from cleansing I cried. There to my heart 
was the blood applied. We are singing what? Glory to his name. Come on, let me hear you. Down at the cross, down at the cross, where my Savior died. Oh, down where for cleansing from sin I cried. That to my heart was the blood of life singing glory. friend we have yes, in Jesus all our sins oh. and grief to bear what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer eternal God and our father we thank you for this beautiful day we thank you for this moment we thank you for enable us to be here this morning. Of the psalmist David said, Lord, this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So Heavenly Father, as we come this morning, I ask that your Holy Spirit will tabernacle with us this morning. I pray that your Holy Spirit will empower us this morning. I pray that no one will leave the way they came this morning. I pray, God, that you will empower that this morning. Breathe upon us this morning. Strengthen us this morning. I pray, Jehovah God, that as we come this morning, God, 
that every hearts and minds may be in one accord. That when we come to the end of this worship experience today, we may say it was good for us to be in your presence. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will breathe upon the choir this morning as they sing unto your glory. Anoint the musicians and so God that they will play skillfully for your glory. And to your speaker this morning, your man servant, who you have called for such a time as this, I pray that you will empower him this morning, that the word will come from thy throne this morning. I pray that your people will have a receptive heart to your word this morning. I pray that your word will not fall on deaf ears this morning. For those who are listening this morning by way of Facebook, God, or the internet, I pray that the word will go forth this morning. That someone, oh God, who is living in sin, God, someone who is on the way, my God, to hell, my God, will give this morning the preacher their hands and give their hearts to you this morning, Lord. Hear from thy throne this morning. Hear from thy holy hill this morning. And as we ask of you this morning, that everything God will be said this morning will be said and done in decency and in order so that you will get the glory yes. and you will get the honor Hallelujah. when we come to the end of this worship experience while we say thanks in Jesus' Jesus. precious name. And all God's people who is in agreement, give God a praise.
ought to thank God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. If you're here and you say, believe it or not, you are a living miracle. And for that, you ought to tell God, thank you. Somebody shout, I know that's right. Amen. We thank God for his goodness toward us each and every day. And if you can't find anything else to shout about, the fact that you saved, that ought to be enough. Amen. That you know better days are coming. So good to see you this morning. We thank God for the opportunity to look up on your smiling face. And for those who are tuning in by way of technology, good morning again and God bless you to you as well. Um, I was so delighted that we were able to get to a place where we could start baptism again. In fact, I was, amen. <laughs> Deacon Murray, I was so excited. I was going to say, let's baptize them twice. <laughs> it was just so good because that's really what it's all about. Somebody say glory to that. That those who go down and to the water and to come up new creatures, those who are not ashamed to let the world know I'm on the Lord's side. And we thank God for that opportunity that we can once again begin to um, highlight uh, and celebrate by way of baptism. I want to ask you to continue to be mindful of our times of study and prayer. Monday mornings with the master, that takes place at 8.30 every Monday, our time of prayer. Uh, we ask that you would join us. Um, tell you it will change your life if you have not done so. Then also on Wednesdays, our time of study, 8.30. Uh, our Bible study, Trustee Brown will lead us in our time of study of the God's word. And then at 615, the men have a class and the ladies have a class as we will review and study and discuss our Sunday school lessons. So please, ma'am, please, sir, make it a point to join us for those times of spiritual growth and development. We promise you, if you do it, it will change your life. Won't encourage us to continue to be diligent, be mindful. Um, I was listening the other day, and as quiet as it kept, there are still those who are succumbing to this virus. People are still passing away. I don't want us to get too, too lazy and too laid back. Continue to practice social distancing and do all that they instruct us to do so that we can stay safe. Amen? And I appreciate you all cooperating in the service as I see we are spreading ourselves out so that we can be safe and uh, follow the guidelines that we've set here at Mount Calvary so that you can worship uh, and do so at a safe and social distancing. So thank you, thank you, and thank you again. Uh, I believe um, we're going to be having our first uh, feeding um, project this year, Inspiration of Hope. I believe that's going to take place, am I right, on the 11th? Is that correct? On the 10th? On the 10th, I was looking for my notes on the 10th here, and we would that you would join us. It will be hopefully the first of several that we will have here on the campus at Mount Calvary and encourage others from the community to come and be blessed. Um, and we will be here and we will give our food as long as we have food. Uh, the last time we were able to do that, it was such a blessing to the community. So we pray that you get the word out and we do need volunteers. So if you're willing to share uh, with us in that endeavor, please see Sister Pat Askew or call the church office and give Charlene your name and she'll make sure Sister Pat Askew gets the information. So we wanna be a blessing again to our community by way of the food giveaway. So. Listen, God is pleased when we look beyond the walls of Mount Calvary uh, and make that a priority. So let me just say thank you in advance uh, as we continue to do a serious work for a soon coming king. Amen. We do solicit your prayers uh, for Sister Walker. I see her today. Uh, yesterday, there was a homegoing celebration for her uncle, I believe. So we want to let Sister Walker know we're praying for you and your family and that God will continue to strengthen you even in this tender moment. Also, we received word that Sister Maxine had to be taken to the hospital uh, a couple of days ago, but I talked with her yesterday, and um, she was just telling me that, you know, God has angels, uh, and he's still using people to be a blessing, and so she's going to have a procedure sometime today, so we just want to call her name and ask God to bless her and to keep her, that all will go well, amen, but she wants you all to know that she's a living testimony that God is still working miracles. So keep her in your prayers. At this time, if we have any guests in the service, would you stand? Any guests in the worship experience today, would you stand? We're all family. Amen, we have one. Amen. <laughs> Let me say to you this morning, we are so grateful that you are here. We're thankful for your presence, and we pray that something will take place that will bless you in this worship. 
Uh, if you're looking for a new church home, we would that you would prayerfully consider Mount Calvary. If you're visiting, uh, we're glad that you're here. Make this your home away from home when you're in the Palm Coast area. And we want you to know that our motto here is simply this, that they shall know that we are Christians by our love. And we welcome you and love you with the love of Christ. Amen. Well, we've had our baptism, uh, and there are several persons who not necessarily were baptized, but who have completed the requirements of new member orientations, and today they are ready to receive the right hand of fellowship. So I'm going to ask if Luciana Bailey would come, David Arrington, Michelle Arrington, and Pamela Britton. If you're here, would you come? Would you come? Come on, y'all tell God thank you. Bless the name of our God. The individual standing before you, they have met the requirements by way of new memorientation and meeting with and consulting with the past and those who needed to have been baptized. And so it indeed gives me great pleasure to say to each and every one of you, having fulfilled the requirements, I am peacock proud to declare that you are in fact a full-fledged member of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church of Palm Coast with all the rights, privilege, and responsibilities as any other member here. We thank God for you and we pray that you will help us get the word out that Jesus is alive and well and available for whosoever will. As I mentioned earlier, we are doing a serious work here for a soon coming king. I last if our ministers and Dagonet would join me as we extend to all of you the right hand of fellowship, correction, the right bump of fellowship. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, sir. Welcome. Bless you. And let me just say, just to Britain, uh, who's a member here, would you tell them where you live? Michigan. She's a member from Michigan. She flew in so that she could get her information taken care of today. She lives in Michigan. Time about to tell God thank you. some praise in this place. We thank him for the increase and for the spirit of excitement that continues to permeate this house. Amen. And we pray that all of us recognize this is a good thing when we have others who come aboard to help us 
carry out the mandate to let a dying world know about a living Savior. At this time, let us prepare for our offering. Deacons, will you come? We prepare to give. We ask that you would do so with a smile on your face. Why, Pastor? Well, the Bible tells us that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So as you give, we pray that you give with a spirit of happiness, a spirit of gratitude, gratefulness, and obedience, and give as the Lord has blessed each one of us. And if you think about it, the giving ought to be a happy time in the life of every believer, amen, because we get a chance to show God how much we love him and how much we appreciate all that he has done for us. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Come now and follow the specific instructions of our rushes. Let us now prepare to cheerfully give. For this offering and tithe that have been collected today. We ask of you today, Holy Spirit, as your people give, I pray that you will continue to bless them. Bless them abundantly. Remember those who have to give today and those who didn't have to give. I pray that your blessing will continue upon them, Lord, that sometime they will have to give toward the furtherance of your work here on earth. Why we say thanks in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Oh, we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed when we come and when we go, we cast down every strong sickness and poverty must cease, for the devil is defeated, we are we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field. Oh, 
folk, put your hands together. If you know you're blessed, bless the name of our God. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for the smiles that I saw as you came around to share in this time of offering. And may the Lord God continue to bless all of you real, real good. Amen? Do you want to share just before the ensemble comes, our song of preparation, that on last Sunday, I forgot to, to mention it, but on last Sunday at 5 o'clock, I went to Eustis, Florida to partake in the installation of our former youth minister, Elder William Robinson. He is now Pastor William Robinson. So we want to continue to pray for him as he now has been elevated. Wonderful service, wonderful presentation. He asked me to convey his heartfelt thanks to all of you for your prayers, for your support, for you allowing him to be able to be a part of the Mount Calvary experience. And so we're praying for him that God will use him in a mighty and miraculous way. So he is now Pastor William Robbins. Come on, let's thank God one more time.
Hallelujah. We serve a great God. I wish y'all wouldn't sit down on him. Bless the name of how many folk know we serve a great God? Bless the name of our God. God, we thank you for this preaching moment. Thank you for your spirit that permeates this place. Continue to stay with us, and we're not ashamed to let the world know we serve a great God. One who flung the stars and the moons into space. One who's promised never to leave us no matter what. Ask now that you would bless these your people by way of this your word. As we find ourselves in this season of Black History Month, we want you to know that we recognize that we're a unique people because we've always been God connected to you. And we ask that we continue to look to you in the midst of all that we face as the author and the finisher of our faith. We thank you for the contribution of, of our forefathers, those who've been used to be trailblazers down through the years. Let us never negate or forget our history, for we have a great and rich history. We have a history where constantly we see your hand is upon us as a people and continue to bless us and remind us that even now, the best is yet to come. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen and thank God. You may be seated in the presence of our God. I'm going to have you sit this time because I may do something a little different. Can we pull up Luke chapter 21? I want to look at verses 17 through 19. I know I have it in the King James translation, but do I have it in the contemporary? All right, let's, let's start with the King James version. And here's how it reads. I'm going to allow you to sit this morning. Starting at verse 17, King James version. The King James version reads this way. Let me get the King James version on the screen. We have the contemporary We need verses 17 through 19. I'll read the King James Version, starting at verse 17 down through verse 19. It says, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Verse 18 says, But there shall not a hair on your head perish. And then verse 19 says, In your patience possess ye your souls. And the thought and the thrust is really read that verse 19, but in the contemporary English version, here's what it says, verse 19. It says, in your patience, I mean, you will be saved by being faithful to me. Let me read it again. You will be saved, how? By being faithful to me. And I want to talk just we kick off this month of black history and acknowledge us as a people. I want to use those two verses, a few verses of scripture, and to tag this team in this thought. I want to talk about if our patience runs out. If our patience. Take your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't let your patience run out. If our patience runs out. We look forward to, to Black History Month every year because of the opportunity it affords us to revisit some of our past achievements that, that God has used us to bring to pass. Some of you, I'm sure, may already know that America has been recognizing black history since 1926 when it began as Negro History Week. Black history had barely begun to be documented or studied back then. Deacon Murray, our current celebration was motivated by a need to make sure that our presence in America, which began before the Revolutionary War, would gain a respectable presence in America's history books. We owe Black History Month and the study of black history to Dr. Carter G. Woodson, a man born to freed slaves, 
Woodson worked in the coal mines of Kentucky, Deacon Simpson, and, and 20, at 20 years old, he enrolled in high school. He finished in two years and went on to Harvard for his PhD. While attending Harvard, he was deeply disturbed by, by the lack of black history being taught. Woodson made it his ambition, his goal to change that. And thus, Black History Month was born. Now, we jokingly, Chairman Joseph, say that February was, was chosen because it's the shortest month of the year. But in reality, it is that Woodson himself chose this month as Negro History Month because it marked the birthdays of two men who greatly influenced African Americans, Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln. And I wonder, Deacon Robinson, what Dr. Woodson would think, uh, a man of meager means who was able to attend Harvard University. I wonder what he would think, Deacon Kirk, about the challenge for higher education among African Americans today. There was a time when academic standing was the key to acceptance at prestigious universities. But today, academics alone won't get it. You're going to have to have some deep pockets. And, and Reverend Watson, I thought about it. I ran over some notes I had from years past as we celebrated back history. And I ran across something that I found quite intriguing that I want to share with you all today. I found it quite intriguing, the parallel, watch this, y'all, between the plight of the African-American and the history of the Hebrews. You're my historian, so that's why I looked at you. Think about this, you all. Both the African-American and the history of the Hebrews, both parties spent over 400 years in slavery. The Hebrews in Egypt, the African-Americans in America. Both were beaten by their taskmasters to increase their yield. The Hebrews by Egypt's taskmaster's whip. The African American by the overseer's whip. Both built treasured cities for their masters. The Hebrews built Ramsey's pyramids. And the African American, watch this, built the White House and Washington, D.C. Both had their identities stolen from them, Dr. Fontaine and were renamed by their captors. Both were, were redeemed from slavery by blood, one by the blood of a lamb on the doorpost, and the other by the blood of the Civil War. But that's really where the similarities end, Deacon Simon, because the Hebrew slaves in Egypt, they were delivered and formed themselves into a nation under God. The African Americans were delivered from slavery into a Jim Crow era of racism and a systematic effort to divide and conquer. And even today, we still find ourselves wrestling with this dilemma. And let, let, let me keep it real. Let me keep it real. I got a whole month of preaching, so I don't have to rush today. Th there are a plethora of problems that plague us as a people. And if we're going to be honest, some of the issues are self-imposed. Can I talk about it? We, 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 we cannot blame others for the high rate of our young men who will, who will lay down and help board these children, but will not take care of their children. Um, uh, and this trend is becoming a problem all across this country because it, it's known in the day and time in which we live, one paycheck is seldom enough to support a family in today's economy. Y'all, we cannot blame someone else for black-on-black -black crime. Y'all not going to talk to me this morning, but I'm just putting it where we need to get it. Though the desire to strip our own people of safe neighborhoods is fueled by the great lack in the inner city community, our moral fiber did not have to or does not have to deteriorate to such a state as we are witnessing today. But I didn't come to make this the focus of our black history of sermons focusing on our short calling because there's too much blame to go around. Instead, here's what I want to do. I want to focus today, y'all, on those situations that are outside of our control. I want to focus on those things that are above our pay grade, Deacon, right? I want to look at situations that deserve our attention and demand our energy like never before. Y'all got 12 minutes? What issues of do you speak, Pastor Coffey? Well, well, let me start right here. First of all, one of the issues we cannot ignore is that our judicial system is racist. Is this microphone, I'm just going to put it, where is that? 
I think I'm looking at too much CNN too, so y'all y'all pray for me. Uh, uh, Bill Quigley of the Huffington Press, he writes, he says, the biggest crime in the U.S. criminal justice system is a race-based institution where African Americans are directly targeted and punished in a more aggressive way than white people. Some may claim that that statement is politically controversial, but the truth is that the statistics are overwhelming. In other words, you can't argue with the facts. And so the, the question becomes, the question becomes, Sister Yvette, is the United States criminal justice system being operated, watch this, to deliberately marginalize and control millions of African Americans in a new form of slavery? Here's something for you all to consider. Though blacks and whites engage in drug offenses at a comparable rate, and, 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 and wrong is still wrong, I don't care who does it, but, but, but listen, although blacks and whites engage in drug offenses at comparable rates, in the last four decades, African Americans who make up 13% of the populations have been arrested for drug-related offenses at a rate of 37%. Studies show that minor drug offenses among African Americans are penalized far more severely than similar offenses by whites and end up 56% of the prison population looks like us. While a white offender may get community service or suspended sentences and parole, his black counterpart is more likely to get substantial prison time. Sentences vary so far across the board from state to state that the Attorney General Deacon Simpson of the Office of the Federal Government continues to monitor the disparity to try to find out the reasons and create a solution. Not only do we have a, a racist judicial system, can I push it? Police stops for blacks and Latinos is out of control. Don't mean no harm, but, but in New York City, where people of color make up half of the population, 80% of the New York Police Department stops were of blacks and Latinos. Only 8% of whites stopped were frisked, while 85% of blacks and Latinos were frisked. This aggressive police behavior has yet to be explained. The aggression doesn't stop just with frisking, y'all. Too many unarmed black and Latinos have been killed. Watch this. Not shot in the front, but they've been shot in the back. Are y'all hearing me? L li listen, listen. Th they were shot while reaching for their driver's license. They were shot while running away from a taser. They were choked to death for selling cigarettes on a street corner. Arrested for a busted taillight and ended up hanging in a jail cell. And the list goes on and on and on. Not only do we have a racist judicial system, not only is police stops for black and Latinos out of control, let me give you one more thing to ponder. African Americans are overwhelmingly denied participation, watch this, in jury duty. We are frequently and illegally excluded from jury duty at a rate of, you may not believe this, at a rate of eight out of 10. What does that mean for us? Consequently, blacks are not being permitted the right to exercise decisions over the fate of our own people especially in cases of death sentences. And as a result of our absence on the jury, when a sentence is harsh and long, statistics show that it is more likely being given to someone who's black or Latino. You should be asking yourself, in our American democracy, how can this happen? I think I got an answer. It happens because we live in an America that does not live up to its Declaration of Independence and its Constitution. Can I just preach it like I feel it? In, in fact, in, since 1776, America, if you're going to be honest, has refused to live up to the lofty ideal that all men are created equal. And the surprise should not, surprise should be the last thing that you and I here are feeling right now this morning. But here it is, here it is, here it is, Reverend Watson. How do persecuted people 
survive in such a climate? Glad you asked. For the answer, we have to go to the word of God. Listen, I think it's Jesus. In fact, I know it's Jesus who said, blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and utter all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Listen, what I want to tell you is that God promises us that if we remain faithful to him, Deacon Wright, sir, he will endow us, watch this, with a double portion of strength to get through this evil landscape. Let me say that again. God has promised us that, that, that if we will be faithful to him, if we will hang on in there, if we will if we'll keep looking up and trusting him, he will endow us with a double portion of strength to get through this evil landscape. But let me give you three things to consider that ought to help you this morning as I encourage you to hang in there because something bad could happen if our patience runs out. First of all, you need to know this is you're going to navigate through this tumultuous time. First of all, you've got to know your enemy. Turn to your neighbor and say, know your enemy. The word, the Bible teaches us that we wrestle not against Donald Trump. The Bible teaches us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of spiritual wickedness in high places. I think that's Ephesians 6.12 if I'm from right. Those who persecute us are not our enemies. They are the tools of our enemies. Did y'all catch that? The enemy is Satan. You know Beelzebub, don't you? Yes, sir. S listen, someone who just got out of office proved to us that Satan uses governments and individuals to carry out his disruptive and destructive missions. And we need to know who our enemy is. That's the first thing. We need to maybe identify him for who he is and for what he is. But then the next thing we need to do, as we navigate through these tumultuous waters, we've got to stay vigilant. Somebody say stay vigilant. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, we have to be sober means you got to stay awake. You got to be aware of what's going on. You, 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 you got to be so, you got to be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And we are soldiers in the army of the Lord and, and, and our army needs an organized front like, like the front line Dr. King forged during the civil rights movement. Listen, many, many of those who are speaking out on our behalf on the platform of, of, of society who have, who have major voices in the community and on television, they've come to the conclusion that, that we've dropped the ball, y'all. They feel like too many of us uh, prefer to act as though the battle has been won. Listen, they feel like we are now kicking the can down the road, that we've turned a deaf ear to the cries of those who are under attack. But listen, the unjust death of every man or woman, it diminishes all of us. What am I saying? I'm saying, y'all, the struggle is not over. Hear me well? The struggle is not over. And God needs some soldiers with the courage to stand. So here it is. You, you got to know your enemy. You, you make it. You got to know your enemy. And you, but you got to also be vigilant. But then the third thing, and this ought to shout you is you've got to trust the outcome to God. Now that was good right there. You've got to trust the outcome to God. If I gave Deacon S. Reed this microphone right now, she would tell you without hesitation, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. Why? Because he shall, he will direct Thy paths. And you know what that says? That says that God is warning us, don't miss this, to be careful in whom we put our trust. Did you catch that? You got to be careful in whom you put your trust. Let, let me see if I can put it in your lap. A fellow by the name Barack Obama 
first African American president. And I, I supported him. I, I was glad to see God's hand at work in his life. But, but let me tell you something. As, as, as much as he was able to do, there was so much more he tried to do, but they would not allow him to do. And while I make it known that I felt like he had the best interest of the country, not just us as a people, but this whole entire country, uh, he had our best interest at heart, I had some issues with Barack Obama. I'm just telling you. But, but here's the thing. While I, I, I thought he was moving in the right direction, I did not put my trust. In Barack Obama. Joe Biden is having his own battle right now as he's going up the rough side of the mountain. And I think he also has good intentions. But, but I would not go to bed putting my trust in Joe Biden. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Do, do you hear? In fact, in fact, Matthew 24, 11, I think, says this. He want, Jesus warns us. He says, many false prophets shall rise and deceive men. And not saying that they are, but there are some out there. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But here's, for, here, here, here's a notion for us. But he or she that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. So here it is. Endurance, stamina, fortitude, and this is a word I made up, stick to patience, or what's needed for this journey. But here's the thing, you can only get that when you put your trust in a sovereign savior. Am I preaching this morning? That only comes from, that, that doesn't come from a Democrat or a Republican, that comes from a sovereign God. And we're warned to not let our love for God wax cold or grow weak. I get it, y'all. I, I understand. I promise you I understand. Injustice fuels many a fire. Am I right about it? Sir, and, and when our emotions run high, we, we have a tendency to run ahead of God. I'm guilty. Listen, and, and, but, but the only way to combat evil is by trusting God for the victory. I got some news for you that ought to, ought to help you today. I have to remind myself of this constantly. God understands our dilemma. God knows exactly where we are. God knows exactly, Reverend Smith, what we are going through. God knows exactly what we are dealing with. But here's the shout. God also has a plan. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. He, yeah, he, he, has, he has a plan. And, and I'm thoroughly convinced that not only does he have a plan, but in his time, he will unveil his plan. So what are you saying? I'm saying don't get impatient. Because if our patience runs out, y'all, we got too much to lose. If our patience runs out, we risk missing the moment when all the crooked places will be made straight down. Sir, hear, hear me this morning. Don't you get impatient? Because if we wait upon the Lord, how many folk know he will renew our strength in? Don't y'all, don't, don't, don't get impatient. No, um, we need only to hold fast, Chairman Joseph, to the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that has promised us. Uh, listen, here's what's going to happen. If you hang in there, if, 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 if we don't let our patience run out, listen, God will write a new history, one of compassion, one of grace and one of power and, and one of wisdom and all of it's going to come through his glory and by his spirit. Um, and I thought about this sermon as I put it together because for the last few Bible studies we've been talking about justice and, and injustice and righteousness um, and the reality is if you're not careful sometimes you can almost get down in the dumps because it seems like the ball is going the other way but baby just hang in there don't you get impatient because God God sees, God knows, and God cares because God has promised to take care of his children. Church of old will say, don't get weary, children, because our God sees, he knows, and he's aware of what's going on. So what should we do? We should stay close to the Savior. Take a neighbor say, stay close to the Savior. 
Because when you stay close to the Savior, you, 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 you have access uh, uh, with his presence because God will encourage us. Don't you lose patience um, because with his angels, God will guard us. You don't believe it, ask Maxine. Uh, stay close to the Savior. Uh, don't lose patience because with his peace, God will calm us. Um, with his anointing, God will strengthen us. Um, with his manna, God will feed us. Uh, with his power, God will deliver us. I'm going to say that one again. With his power, God will deliver us. But we will miss this mighty move of the master if our patient runs out. I'm done. I got a few more Sundays to preach, so I ain't got to give it all to you today. I'm done. I'm done for the day. But listen, you all, my wife oftentimes informs me that more and more she catches me talking to myself. Don't judge me. Some of y'all, yeah. More and more she catches me talking to myself. I know y'all don't do that. It's just me. Sir, yeah, 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 sir. And, and, and listen, let me see if I can explain to you what's going on. As I look and I listen to all of the injustice and, and all of the hate and all of the lack of concern for, for people of color, I find myself uh, finding myself following the instructions found in 1 Samuel 30 and 6. Y'all know what happened in 1st second, don't you? 1st Samuel 30. David found himself in a unique place. Uh, he gone back to Ziglag and found out that the whole city had been annihilated and all the women had been taken and was total destruction. And in fact, it got so bad that his soldiers were considering stoning him. Yeah, yeah, that, that's in 1st uh, uh, Samuel 30. And, and it was there where David finds himself feeling dejected Deacon Wright, he felt defeated, and although he's discouraged, and he may even have been somewhat depressed. Do you know what David does? Can I give it to you? The Bible says, Deacon Simpson, that David encouraged himself in the Lord. I'm gone. That's, it. That's all I'm doing. So, so when y'all see me or you hear me seemingly having a conversation with myself, I'm just doing like David. Uh, Deacon S. Reed, I'm just encouraging myself in the Lord. Uh, sometimes I might not be able to call Chapman Joseph. I might not be able to call Deacon Simpson. I may not be able to call Deacon Murray. I may not be able to call Deacon Robinson. I may not be able to call Deacon Kirk. I may not be able to call any of my deacons or my deaconesses, but I've learned how to encourage myself Y'all ever been there? Yes, sir. To encourage myself in the Lord. Um, and, and so sometimes when you see my mouth moving, uh, I'm just reminding myself of a promise of a sovereign Savior. Sometimes I'm moving my mouth. What I'm saying, what are you saying? Well, sometimes when, when I'm moving my mouth, I'm saying like a ship that's tossed and driven, um, battered by an angry sea. Uh, when the storms of life are raging uh, and the spirit that can falls on me, uh, and I wonder what have we done as a people uh, to make this race so hard to run. Uh, but then I say to myself, so take courage. You know why? Because the Lord's going to make a way. Sometimes when, when you see my, my mouth moving, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to myself, but I'm just encouraging myself. Sometimes I'm saying to myself, self, though the storms keep on raging in my life, um, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Um, still that hope that lies within is reassured uh, as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore uh, because I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place that he had prepared. Uh, but then I say, but if the storms don't cease uh, and if the winds keep on blowing, I'm done, y'all. This is what I say. I say, my soul uh, has been anchored uh, I said my soul has been anchored. I don't care who's in the White House because my soul has been anchored. I don't care what kind of false legislation they're trying to pass. My soul has been anchored. And if there anybody can testify, come what may, I'm going to hang in there. My patience will not run out because one day God's going to make everything all right. How do I know? Because because he promised it. And how many people can testify he's never made a promise that he did did not keep. Y'all 
Yeah, I do. I'm guilty. I talk to myself. But here's what I discovered. The God I serve. If nobody else want to hear what I'm commiserating about, the God I serve will not only listen to me, but he's able to do something about it. Ha, <laughs> ah, God, thank you, Jesus. If my patience doesn't run out, if I hang in there, if I recognize exactly who we're up against and what we're up against, but then I recognize greater is he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. So hear me well. We are rich people and we serve a great God and he knows all about it. But not only are we rich in our culture, we are rich in our faith. So we just have to hang on in there. We have to continue to hold high the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. If they give us evil, we return with good. I think Michelle Obama said it this way. When they go low, we go high. If our patience doesn't run out, when it's all said and done, we're going to get it, y'all. We're going to get the victory. Little boy was sitting in the center of the floor of the house, comic book, flipping through the pages. He was flipping through the pages and it was Batman, Robin. As he was flipping through the pages, each time he turned the page, the father began to look. Batman and Robin were getting tore up. I mean, Joker, they, they was putting it on him. Print one page, I mean, it really looked bad for Batman and Robin. But every time the little boy would turn the page, he would say, ooh, you gonna get it. Turn the page. Batman and Robin, <laughs> look, they're going to be pushed off a cliff, their hands tied behind their back. Joker getting ready to push him off. Little boy say, ooh, you're going to get it. Finally, the dad couldn't take it no more. He said, son, what you do? So I'm looking at this cartoon book, dad. He said, but I notice every time you turn the page, you keep saying they're going to get it. But every time you turn the page, Batman and Robin, their predicament seemingly gets worse and worse. But you keep saying to, to the Joker, you're going to get it. I don't understand. He said, well, dad. It's quite simple. He said, I already went to the end of the book. I know how the story ends. <laughs> Hang in there. I'm telling the devil right now, guess what, devil? Ooh, you're going to get it. Can we celebrate the promises of God? If we continue to walk in the power of God, we as a people shall overcome. Doors of the church are open. We shall overcome. And the first step to being an overcomer is you have to be in the will and in the way of God. If you're here today and Jesus Christ is not the centerpiece of your life, we offer Christ to you this morning. He's ready, willing, and able to meet you at your point of need. If you will come today, surrender your life to him. No matter what you face, first of all, you know you don't have to face it alone. Because he says, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. If you're not saved today, why not give Jesus Christ an opportunity to put you in a place where you can claim victory? Don't worry about what it looks like today. Because the believers, we decree and declare for us, better days are coming. And while we are going through whatever we are going through, therein lies our testimony. We are going through. For God is with us. He will keep us. He will carry us as we continue to hold up the light to be a witness in these last and evil days. If you're here, would you come? Oh, I'll say yes. The doors are open. Lord, yes. Oh, to your will. Tuning Lord, in. Yes, if you're tuning I in, will trust by way of technology, dial 386 447 5719. We have someone standing by. Pray with you and to lead you into a, a new relationship with Jesus Christ. 
He's waiting for whosoever will. 386-447-5719. If you're listening in today, don't put off for next week what you can take care of. This Jesus said, Behold, stand at the door. And I know. All you've got to do is to let him in. And your life will never ever be the same. Will you call in today? If you're here, will you call today? If you're already known, come on, help me say it. Oh, I'll say yes, Lord. wants to know if we took to heart that mandate that says we have to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. May God bless you. May God keep you. And we have much to celebrate, not just for us in the month of February, but all year long. For we are a great people because we serve a great God. And the church said, Give God a rousing round of applause if you know you serve a great God. And not that you're bragging, if you know you are a great people because of the God you serve. Amen and thank God. Let us now prepare for our time of communion. We would that all who can would stay, but if you must leave, we ask that you would do so at this time. If you must leave, we ask you to do so at this time. We hope that you would be able to stay to partake of this time of communion. Amen. We now place you in the hand of our deacons. If you would please stand for the reading of the church covenant. If we can read together. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into a covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in acknowledge and holiness, to give it a place in our affection, prayer, and services above every organization of human origin, to sustain its worship, ordinance, disciplines, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us towards its expense for the support of the faithful and evangel ministry among us, the relief of the poor and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of a difference of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit. And if we cannot unanimously agree, 
we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. As we engage to maintain faith and sacred devotions, we study diligently the word of God to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ, and faithful in the service we promise to others, endeavoring in all purity of heart and goodwill to all men to exemplify and command our holy faith. We further engage to watch over, to pray for, to exalt and stir up each other unto every good word and work, to guard each other's reputation, not needlessly exposing the infirmities of others, participate in each other's joy, and with tender sympathy bear one another's burden and sorrows, to cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give taking offense, but always ready for reconciliation, being mindful of the rule of the Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew, to secure it without delay, and through life, aim evil report and good report, to seek to live to the glory of God, who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When we remove from this place, we engage as soon as possible to unite with another church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and principles of God's word. Amen. Father, how we thank you for this precious moment as we come now to, to vicariously visit Calvary. We pray that you would remove all distractions, remind us that while salvation is free, it was not cheap, but we paid for it with Son Jesus' blood out on a hill called Calvary. We thank you for that blood. And we ask now that as we prepare to be partakers of this bread and this wine, that we would never forget that those of us who are saved and sealed because of his precious blood, we still have a charge to keep. And we still have a God to glorify. We as a people must fight on holding high the bloodstained banner of Jesus. We thank you for the sacrifice. Bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen and amen. ask those who are unable to come around to receive your communion we ask that you would raise your hands that we may serve you first
ask now that we will all stand and follow the specific instructions of our ushers as you come around to receive your communion. Has any baptized believer been omitted? Broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, take ye, eat ye all of it. Shed blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, take ye, drink ye all of it. It is said that afterwards they sang a hymn and went out. While we're not sure what they say, we go from this place today, God's grace upon you, and asking that the Lord would bless you real, real good. Go in peace, my father's children. God bless you real good. Oh, commit your heart to serve him each and every day. May the Lord God bless you real good. you real good. 
to lift your heart, to make your heart to serve him, each and every day, may the Lord God bless you real good, oh, may the Lord, may the Lord God bless you real good, may the Lord God, may the Lord God bless you real good, commit your heart, commit your heart. Each and every day, commit, commit your heart to serve. 